Hello, I'm Pastor Heath, and welcome to today's devotion. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. This verse is something that we've talked about in church and many of our connect groups. And I know we've talked about it many times, but it's worth repeating over and over again. We've talked about Paul's heart as he displays it right here in this verse. He says his desire and his prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Consider for a moment who he's talking about, the people of Israel. In chapter 9, at the beginning of the chapter, Paul looks at Israel, the nation, his own people, his countrymen, his fellow Jews, his neighbors, his family, his friends. He looks at a nation that has altogether rejected the Messiah, Jesus. He looks upon them and he actually wishes deep in his heart that he could take their place. In other words, he would be willing, if it were possible, to be accursed from Christ, if it would mean that they, the Israelites, could be saved. That is a great love. And it's no wonder why Paul was one of the greatest soul winners we've ever met. He loved people with the love of God. But consider for a moment, again, who he's talking about. Yes, it's the nation of Israel, it's the Jewish people. But do you remember what those same people thought about Paul? How did Israel feel about Paul? How did his fellow countrymen feel about him when he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, when you read through, for instance, the book of Acts, we find out that they hated Paul. They wanted to kill Paul. They mocked him. They criticized him. They tried to hunt him down in order to kill him. In fact, at one point, they stoned him. They're, they've become his enemies. They hate him. They want him dead. Yet Paul still says, if it were possible, I would trade places with these people. I would die and go to hell if it meant they could be saved. How does he develop such a love. Yes, the Bible says that when we are saved, that God fills us with His love through the Holy Spirit. But how has this kind of love and this attitude, this longing for these people, even His enemies, how was that cultivated in Paul's life? Well, I believe he tells us in Romans 10 verse 1 when he says, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. You see, that's how Paul learned to love even his enemies, through prayer. Paul prayed for those who persecuted him. He prayed for those who wanted him dead. He prayed for those who mocked him and gossiped and hated him with great hatred. And when Paul prayed for them, he didn't pray that God would smite them, that God would quickly judge them or, or to destroy their lives. He prayed God's blessing, God's greatest blessing, that they would be saved. It was prayer. It was prayer for the people. That didn't change the people, but it changed Paul. That's how he's got such love. That's how his attitude is so wonderful. That's how he can say the things that he did because he learned to pray for them. He did what Jesus tells all of us, to love our enemies. And even with those who persecute us, who say bad things against us, pray for them. It's a hard thing to do as a Christian. You might know somebody today who doesn't like you, who has made it known that they are your enemy. They mock you. Maybe they, they don't like the fact that you walk with Jesus, whatever it might be. What should your response be in such instances? Well, Paul teaches us and Jesus teaches us that we are to pray for them. Pray that God will bless them and pray that above all things, God will save those who need to be saved. So who is that in your life that needs to be prayed for? I challenge you this coming week, when God brings those people to your mind, pray for them one by one, that God will bless, protect them, love them, shine his face on them, and ultimately save them. And once you pray like that, then watch how God will bless you in your heart. Amen. God bless you today.